uh, to continue, I'm also thinking um, there was a thing. Uh, I think I think uh, James Small mm -hmm. told me this one time, and they, they, they said, "Well, for instance, v a voodoo or voodoo has a bad name." You know, uh, the, the legend has it. it oh, I won't get into it. Yeah, let me give you the legend. It's a theater legend. Here's the thing. It's supposedly um, uh, John Houseman and, uh, and Orson Welles had did this black production of Macbeth or some sort of Shakespeare mm -hmm. thing. And, uh, and the critic didn't like the production. And so uh, so uh, Houseman and, and, and or well, Orson Welles went, I guess they went to Saudis or whatever to get the reviews. But then they somebody left something back at the theater up in Harlem. So they had to go back right. up there. But meanwhile, they had, they, had, they had brought some authentic Haitian drummers from Haiti there. And it's supposedly the, head, the lead drummer said, held up the review and said, this is a bad man. And they drummed all night. And the next morning, this person died, right? Okay, that's the legend. Uh, well, you didn't know who the drummer was? Or? I don't know, it was just a head drummer. Mm -hmm. I guess it's a matter of record. Some but, of the but, drumming people on the planet come yeah. out there. But, but, the, but the, the, what James was saying that uh, people said, well, if, 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 if voodoo is all this and they can do all that, then how come it hasn't liberated the people yet? Mm -hmm. Good question. That what? is a good question. So, what, what, what do you say for that? I don't mean I have a good answer. <laughs> what? That, that's certainly a good question. But also, I mean, I, th I think because I think it, it's how it's directed, how it's used. You know, if there were a concerted effort to use it that way, I think there would be a change. Too. Really? I think, I think Marta, Marta Vega at the Caribbean Cultural Center has talked about that a lot. That African spiritual traditions, if they're not used for our liberation or for forwarding, you know, our people on the planet, then they're not useful, you know. Right. So yeah, so they, of course they, they can be used that way too, but it's, it takes another kind of consciousness too. So what, what, does it take a collective consciousness? Or what, I what, think uh, so, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, you can say that, you know, but you know, the Haitian revolt is based on it. The well, liberating of Haiti is based on voodoo. You well, that, but, but I thought that was also with the archon was there and whatever. But no, with the no, religion that's that's, that's, that's that's just started. Okay. And, uh, 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 there wasn't archon there because basically the people in, in Haiti were Congolese. The, the largest population of Haiti was Congolese. At least that's according to the guy who wrote the book The Maroons in, in Haiti, you know. And there's this myth of them being Dahomean, you know. And But there is a Dahomean input, but it's much later and it's. Um, uh, the whole popular culture is Central African, not not Dahomey, mm -hmm. you know. But there, and because as, as one scholar, John Thornton, writes about during the Haitian Revolt, the language spoken in the field during the revolt is Kikongo. It's not Creole. It's not French. It's not you know Twi or you know some Gabes language from from um, Ghana. It's Kikongo. It's a Central African language. You know, the first act of the revolt is the, the sacrifice of a black pig in Boake Man. That's, you know, that's a, a voodoo ceremony. Mm -hmm. So the Haitians themselves have their mythic origin these directly tied to a voodoo ceremony. So of course these forces can be garnered for our particular needs now. Whether there's a consciousness to do that, that's another thing altogether. You know. But they can be garnered, and, and the revolution is that. And that's funny, that's one of the reasons uh, Haiti and uh, Voodoo had been so de demonized by the West. It was one of the tools fighting the West. It was one of the tools they used to overthrow Napoleon's army. You know, so. Yeah. Well, of course, it's going to be demonized. You know, now, you mentioned Congo, but as, as you well, well you're, the, you're the man on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the things that Congo also not exported, but, but came with, with the with the uh, with the uh, captive with the captives uh, that became slaves in Brazil, for instance, was um, the development of uh, of capoeira. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's another thing. And of course, you know about Queen and Zinga. And that's the whole right. thing. Can you talk a little bit about that? In terms of what? Well, as far as liberation, you know, was if, if if the Congo as a source uh, uh, brought liberation to uh, to Haiti, right? right? And they brought this martial arts form of way of working to, to Brazil. To Brazil yeah. Then I'm looking at the Congo as a as a source for a bunch well, of. You think, the, 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 you're also looking at a kind of uh, intellectual legacy in terms of music, singing, dancing, and in terms of warfare. You know, there's a philosophical legacy that comes from Central Africa. But that doesn't mean that the Central Africa is not without its contradictions. You know, there's a, there has been a consistent effort by Europe and Europeans to destroy African culture, both in Africa and in the Americas. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've, in one sense, they've won. They've won in terms of 
forcing Christianity everywhere they've gone, forcing it all through Central Africa, forcing it all through uh, West Africa. Now, the biggest fight going on with the traditionalists is with the evangelicals. Mm. Not, not with some political bureau, but with an evangelical. You know, so, but it's part of the insidious um, idea. It, part of the problem, we have to look at it as international philosophies of Eurocentrism and white supremacy. Mm. And they're not, they're not dead, they're rampant. You know, you see it in the fact that women all over the planet want to lighten their skin and change their, their look so they look more like Europeans. And that goes from Africa, where bleaching cream is being now outlawed in some countries, mm -hmm. but one of the dominant things you can buy in the African market is bleaching cream to lighten your skin. But that's also true of Indonesia. That's also true of the Philippines. That's also true of India. That's also true of China. Well, Jamaica is now uh, heavy into that. Yeah, but you end up looking in, um, uh, why would a Korean and Japanese women think they had to change their eyes? So their eyes are less almond shaped, that they want, uh, they want their eyes much more European shaped. So it's not just black people. It's, it's anybody who's been, who's, who's non-European, seeing Europeans as the ideal and trying to change their phenotype. You know, I, I mean, it's, and it's, um, it affects white people too, which is really funny. It's like um, if you darken if you darken your hair if you make your hair black, you know then at least in the Western terms you're either it's a political thing, it's about being a goth or being a punk, which are basically about political philosophies, you know. But if you make your hair blonde, it's a beauty statement. It's about trying to look better, mm. you know. What I mean, it's, so you're, it's so uh, deeply entrenched in the psyche of, of of the planet that even white people are trapped in it too, you know. So. You know, so that, that whole model is still there. Mm -hmm. But it's part of Eurocentrism and white supremacy as, as international philosophical models that we all have to be conscious of all the time. Mm -hmm.